The following is a presentation of TFNN. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Every trading day, live at 10 a.m. Eastern. Call now, toll free at 877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Now, Tom and Tommy O'Brien. Welcome, folks. Appreciate you growling and prowling with us out here. We have the Dow Industrials down 51, NASDAQ off 32, S&P's down 9. Gold, gold contract up $5, trading at $14.25 an ounce. We got silver up $0.04, cents, $16.48 an ounce. Light Sweet Crude up $0.44, cents, $57.31 an ounce. Notes and bonds, you get the 10-year down 5 ticks. 127.09, 30 off 5, 154.20, and King Dollar. King Dollar up 104 ticks, 97,900. The Euro is at 108.66. The Pound is at 121, and the Euro is at 111 to 1 U.S. dollar. Let's get over to our man, Mr. Kevin Hinks at TD Ameritrade. Think of Swim as we do each Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. And don't forget, folks, every trading day right here, 11 to 12 Eastern Standard Time, you want to understand options, option strategies, Futures, great program. If you haven't test driven yet the Think of Swim platform, it's real easy to do. Come over to our website at TFNN, hit the banner, bring it up. They'll allow you to trade with paper money. You can call, follow Kevin and his team each and every trading day. And let me tell you something, you better have some defined risk in this program, in this uh, market right now. This S&P, you know, yeah, you get a handle that goes uh, 16 handles, but I'm telling you, we're at 3012, and this baby wants to finish this ABC up at 3055, and if it does, it's going to be wild. Because 3055, 3, watch 3055 okay. coming at us, we'll baby. See what the Fed's coming at us, and Kevin Hanks is coming at us. What's going on, brother? Good morning, Tom. Good morning, Tommy. You know, this this is, we're, we're, we're kind of getting what I thought. You know, we're getting a lot of data. We're getting a lot of opinions, and these stocks and these markets are trading all over the place. So everyone who's interested in these markets is getting something to look at it's in so these true, days. Man. Just you, you know, know, I thought the income and outlays uh, data that came out at 8:30 uh, your time was pretty dull. Didn't get my heart rate up very much. Bonds didn't move very much, uh, but it did. It certainly didn't give Jerome Powell any reason to pause in terms of lowering rates, even though I thought this number was probably too late to affect their, their decision anyway. But, you know, a 1.4 PCE year over year and the core of 1.6, that's not getting it done. So he didn't get any reason not to move on rates uh, tomorrow by, and, by this number for sure. And you know, it's amazing, Kevin, you know, Tommy and I were talking about it yesterday. So they haven't gone down on rates since 2008. That's 11 years, right? Right. And, you know, in, in our careers, I've never seen the Fed just go once either way, either if they're going up or they're going down. You know, it normally turns into some kind of a trend, okay? So that's the thing that's really intriguing. It's like, okay, you know, we're going to get down one. Well, what are we going to do next month and the month afterwards? Because the market's going to be looking for that. Hey, if you right. Know. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, you know, it's going to be interesting. They're, they're going to second-guess the Fed on this one because I don't think they're going to second-guess this move. But they're definitely going to second guess December's rate hike. Yeah. Yes. That's the one that they're going to be heavily scrutinized for. So, you know, I'm interested to see what it does to the U.S. dollar. I'm interested to see what it does to bonds. Uh, I think the rhetoric coming out of this uh, meeting is going to be as important as anything you'll hear this month. His rhetoric going forward, which is this going to be one and done? Is this a one rate cut, wait and see, go data dependent, you know, because some of the numbers, again, the inflation numbers aren't giving us any reason to worry about rates, but but the economy is strong. I mean, yeah. the, you know, it, it, this is one of those odd markets. They're going to be writing about this time in history books, how we, 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 the market got so strong without inflation ever raising its head, at least yet. So no, I, I, there's no doubt. And, you know, this dollar, man, listen, Folks, the dollar's at highs and gold's at highs. And that, that's an anomaly, okay? You know, the bottom line is that, you know, gold is priced in dollars. So it's like, okay, you know, and we'll find out. We'll find out where this goes. I mean, the last couple of days, the way this dollar, it, it's, the volume is so anemic, it's insane. So yeah. I'm looking, saying, okay, 
Fed, you know, the Fed, he'll come out tomorrow and, you know, maybe it will, it will pull back. But you can see the British pound, that thing is getting smoked. You yeah. know, so w when you look at that aspect, I mean, if the euro doesn't get going, well, guess what? The dollar can go higher. Um, and think about this, guys. Procter & Gamble's earnings killed yes. in terms of earnings. Even, and even in then, even as good as their earnings were and the stock up 4.5%, they talked about how much the dollar, the higher dollar, had hurt their sales. Yeah. You know, because remember something, multinationals all get hurt by the higher dollar. Oh, yeah. So, you, you know, I, I understand why foreign governments want their currency lower. And I understand why the U.S. government should want our dollar lower. It makes our goods and services cheaper oh, to yeah. foreign buyers. And you can make a case 27 of 30 Dow stocks are multinationals. So you think that doesn't affect these companies? It does. Sure. You know, this, this Procter & Gamble, that's quite a turnaround on Procter & Gamble, yeah. huh? That's like, you know, I mean, I mean... you know what's fascinating, Tom? You know my favorite thing to do in, in this time of year is when you look at these companies like Procter & Gamble and look at all the brands that, that, that they own and control. Yes. It's amazing. Yeah. I mean, every day you stay in your house, you have at least two or three Procter & Gamble products. Oh, every yeah. Yeah, look at Gillette. I shaved this morning. Head and shoulders. <laughs> and shaved, exactly. Me. You Canteen, don't realize how team. powerful these these consumer staples are until you start looking at them. And man, they have big portfolios. Yeah, Bounty Charm and Dawn, Dye, Tide, Tide, <laughs> right? I mean, Febreze, Mr. Clean, Old Spice, Swiffer. I love that. Swiffer. Checking them off. Boom. That you know what's so funny about this one, Kevin? We're reading this, and you know. I like Tide, but when I want to save some money, I buy Gain. They have competitors. <laughs> and, they, and, they and, and guess what? They're exactly. okay with that, right? <laughs> that's it's amazing. It's kind of like a Facebook Instagram. Yeah, you don't want like Facebook, you want to go to Instagram? That's okay. We own that too. Exactly. I was thinking the same thing as I was going through that. I was like, wow, those are competing brands that I'm comparing in my head often in the store. I do, I do the same thing. <laughs> yeah, I, it's amazing. I mean, you see some of these companies, it's just amazing the depth and the range of their portfolio. Yeah. yeah. I was say, yeah. people are buying stuff if P&G goes up yes. because they just got stuff, man. They, they got everything. They do. Yeah. They do. You know. So, what are we going to be talking about today, Kevin? Obviously, today is going to be all about AMD and Apple. We'll go over the, the Ralph Lauren and Under Armour trade. Remember, we nice. came in short Under Armour, long uh, Ralph Lauren. So Ralph Lauren was actually up pre-market, but it nice. sold off. But our position did fine, and we're short Under Armour. So yeah, you know, you're in really good shape there, man. Under Armour yeah. is down 15%. Yeah, that's a that's a huge move. I get you know it looks like uh, their their conference call didn't go well either. You know it was down early because of a miss on earnings, but then they got on their conference call, and I believe someone told me they they guided lower in the conference call as well. Yeah, you know we always talk about it, Kevin. I love the thinker swim charts, and that's why I want to pull up. And it's because you can see when the earnings come out, which was 7 a.m. Eastern time, yeah. and then the stock was back up to about $22, Kevin. When and I can see exactly when that earnings call started at 7:30. So you trade from 22 to under 20 on whatever they talked about, which definitely, right. yeah, they they got. That's such a good it. point, Tommy. I love to look at the one day, one minute chart on the thinker swim platform whenever any event comes out. I know. You see how big the candle is. You see see the move you know it's just a great just way to see the range under. in the volatility it is man awesome folks right here 45 minutes from now kevin you have a great one safe one and we look forward to the program great talking to you guys have a you good too, day kevin. stay right there tommy and i come right back folks if you're not currently using the Taz Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The Taz Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. 
Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate L. LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow's down 61. Nasdaq's off 32. S&P's are down 10. And uh, BYND. Okay, so check it out. Okay. They're going to take everyone to the cleaners here. Sure are. So it came, they came out with numbers. First off, it's down 25 bucks. Uh, trading 196. Come out with numbers. Beat by, you know, about 10 million bucks. Uh, the gross... For no, revenue? Yeah, gross sales, yes. Okay. That being said, guess what? They're going to be... They're going to do in a secondary, they and sure they're going to allow... Uh, a few insiders to sell into the secondary. One of them being the CEO. Yeah. So <laughs> right. how you know this is when you, you you look at this game, folks, and most of the time you get a, you get a lockup, and yeah. uh, what ends up happening is that the lockup doesn't have like a master lock on it. <laughs> I guess not. I know it did. Yeah. Well, it does, and this happened with GoPro. It happens with a few others. Uh, Goldman Sachs let the CEO of GoPro sell. Now that that way that was done is that he had to put it into a trust. But the bottom line, he, my take is he got away with just everything, okay? Because so, he sold at the very high, and GoPro went to $6. And that, he was I selling at 77 The board has to approve it too, well, correct? The, the board because has that's to approve what it. I really put it on. Yeah, the board has to approve it, but then the broker-dealer that brought it public, that like I sold sure. it to you, I'm the broker-dealer, sure. they have to approve it too. Now, here's, here's where yeah. my opinion, though, yeah. is that, um, of course, the broker-dealer is going to do that. Because guess what? If you're a big IPO company, right. you want to go with a broker dealer that's going to let you get out early. Oh, yeah. So, so, so the the governance part is not yeah. on the broker dealer. Do you yeah. see what I'm saying? Of course oh, yeah. they're going to. So, do you know who it's supposed to be on? The board. They're right. supposed to represent the shareholders. In what good is it to let your CEO get out of the position after it shot up an inordinate amount of money um, before a standard lockup period has expired? And so, there's your board. So, you got. Seth Goldman is the chairman. I believe he's CEO too, maybe. Okay, probably. Yeah. Uh, now, what you can do with this is that I could, I, we don't have enough time, but I could pull these down, and then you can see what they do is that they show cross boards also. Like some of these, sure. you can see where they've been. Because okay. I do this in the gold market all the time, as to see where someone has been to see are these pump and dump stocks or they're good stocks. Do you know what I mean? Sure. Um, so it's kind of cool watching how this shakes out. But so I guess that's the so that is president CEO. So 1.6 million. That's like 32 million. Uh, no, 320. I was going to say, but there it is. Yeah, there it is. Right. Yeah. 
Now, I, that's as of the close yesterday, because I was doing it at yes. $200. Yep. It's about 32, $320 million, right. excuse me. So let's, let's, let's just look at a few others. Let's just pull this guy up. Well, look at that. They are, this, this, these board members have some, have some shares. I mean, it's went up 800%, right? So divide that number by eight in terms of what these people were all worth right. only months ago. Right. And you can see why. I mean, you know, being worth $30 million is amazing. You never have to work again. Being worth $300 million is a different Ooh, stratosphere, baby. right? So I, you understand why they want to sell, but that lockup, man, is supposed to be there. Anyway, Pretty intense. Yeah. Let's go to our man, John in Philly. What's going on, brother? Good morning, Tom and Tommy. Morning, John. Hope you're doing well. Good, man. Good. So, hey, um, Tom, I wanted to ask you about GDX. Um, you, you've documented and tracked this uh, day by day, week by week. So thank you for that. Um, specifically, I want to share with you something I saw yesterday in the GDX options. Okay. And let me just, uh, without digging into it, let me just say specifically, yesterday in the morning, uh, a block of call options uh, on GDX expiring September 20th yep. with an out-of-the-money strike up at 32. So it's 28 right now, roughly, so 32, four bucks above. Yesterday, 60,000 call options were purchased on that 32 call at uh, 17 cents each. Okay. So somebody spent over a million bucks. Yeah for just a boatload of out-of-the-money GDX yes. calls expiring, you know, uh, September 20th, which is one of those uh, triple witches, quadruple witches, actually. So that is just a fact. My question, um, do you have any comment on that? Does that sort of activity say anything to you uh, based upon what you've seen in the past, please? So what I... I don't follow the the volumes inside of the um, option market, John. Okay, but what ha what has happened is this, which is really cool. We know that from the um, the futures market that two weeks ago, what we had is that we had uh, uh, funds come into. The silver market in a huge way. It was the biggest time, biggest they ever came into it. And the way that was structured, folks, the reason we found out is that every Friday, the commodity futures has to basically say who's in and who's out. And so what had happened is that they came into the ETF sector, sector but when they came into the ETF sector, they also went into the futures sector. So the bottom line is that when they went into the futures, we'll get that exact information as to when the CTFC comes out, you don't know exactly who it is. When the 13F filings come out, you know who it is, but that's 45 days after the end of the quarter. So that being said, it totally makes sense to me that, you know, guess what? When you have large players that are coming in, it doesn't take much inside the, the GDX or the gold market in general to run something, you know, $3. I mean, whoever bought those already, they, we, we just looked at the quote, they're already up $0.03 cents to $0.04, cents, and that's a lot on, on $0.17. Cents. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, you just bought it. It was 20 by 21. Oh, okay, we got it. Cool. Yeah. Yes, yes. So y you can see that if they, if they want to run this thing, if they, if, they, if they plan on putting more money. Now, the way, okay, so if I, I, if I bring you back to 2001, folks, okay, what had happened at one point in the marketplace, I actually owned probably three quarters of the calls on a couple equities, a couple gold equities. And the way that, if you're going to really, if you really think, number one, that you get a run that's going and you get the momentum with you, what ends up happening is that a trader in general first would go into the option market, which I did, which they did. Then what's going on is that with the understanding that you're going to go in the equity market and drive the price. And that's very well what they could be doing, because that is that is the way that you really make some big bread. You, first, you lay down the option market, right? Let's say you said it's a million dollars. You lay down the option market, right? If they know they're going to be coming in in the next couple of weeks and they're bullish on it and they're going to buy it, well, guess what? They're driving their own price. And then what would end up happening is that you, as you're driving the price, what you do is that you already have the order in to sell the options. <laughs> so this gets, it, it, it's really simple actually, it's not that technical. Because what happens is that 
as you drive the price of the equity, the option has to go, and the option market maker has to buy it. <laughs> because they have to cover, they have to go delta neutral. So let's hope that that's what they're doing. Because <laughs> if that's what they're doing, they're going to drive price here, man. And it, yeah. it would make sense because I, I would say that for all of us that are in this metals market, whatever Powell says tomorrow is going to be really important. You know? I mean... I mean, I, uh, I, uh, uh, I knew I would get something interesting out of your memory banks uh, with your uh, working with uh, the gold report and those equities dating way back then. So uh, that's a very interesting hypothesis. Thanks for sharing. I appreciate okay, it. Okay, man. Have a great one. Have a safe one. Thanks, John. Stay right there. Tommy and I are coming right back, folks. Our phone number is 877-927-6648. We have the Dow Industrials down 70, NASDAQ down 37, S&P's off 11, gold's up 670, silver's up 7 cents. We'll come right back. Hey, folks. Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. I can't hear anything. That's We're live. Go ahead. Welcome, folks. Dow. Dow Industrials down 73. Nasdaq off 36. S&Ps are off 11. Let's go take a look at some of the higher volume equities out here. Okay, so Pfizer. Pfizer, oh, look at that. Yesterday it was up. Uh, it gave it up this morning. Down $2.30. Oh, look at this one. Okay, so yesterday we were talking about the energy sector, right, coming out. Now, this is pretty intense, folks. So... 
This is another oil service company. And look at the, I mean, we're talking about an oil service company that does $2 billion in revenues, but yet is losing money hand over fist. Yeah, I think they're only a billion dollar company, though. So. You know, $2.1 billion in revenues. For 90 days. They do $10 billion a year, and they're only worth a billion dollars. That's it. Look at that. Yeah. So, now, Weatherford already went bankrupt. This is, uh, you know, this is in trouble. You know, you, you're pounding lows here. 608 we're at. That's 627. I got to bring this back more than 15 years. Look at this. Well, we'll see how this shakes out, man, but it looks to me like uh, you get trouble in paradise here. Uh, it's sticking out like a sore thumb. 42%. Uh, percent. Yeah, quite a, quite a crash. <sighs> Huge. A couple of the other higher volume equities. You got uh, well, Under Arm, we already talked about. Uh, Procter & Gamble's a big one. Yeah. Uh, Beyond Meat down 22 bucks. Not bad, though. If you want to get into Beyond Meat, maybe just pull up the chart, because it's been quite a little pop even. When I did the 10 a.m. update, I think it was trending at, uh, or at 9.45 this morning. It was trending like 190. Yeah, look um, at that. 183 is the low. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, look at that charge higher, man. Yeah. And, you know, guess what, folks? This is, they're going to pull this off, and I believe, so listen, this is what's really amazing. And this is how they really can get this together so fast, that... This is going to be done, um, is tomorrow 31st? Yes, it is. Okay, it's going to be done, today's Wednesday, no, Tuesday. Tuesday. It's going to be done Thursday. This is how quick it is. Is that August 1st? Is yeah. That what you're trying to August do? 1st, August 1st is that this secondary is happening. Okay. Uh, which is pretty intense, man. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, okay, we got it here, so the, the broker dealer community just has to hold this up until tomorrow. Push the stock out. The thing that blows my mind is that, like... They, their selling skills must be so good that, I mean, they have to get on the phone. They have to sell this story to someone else that is going to buy it. at sure. a cut. Now, what happens is this. The way that if, if, if I was selling this to you, right, the broker did, okay, it's $199. They're, they're going to go up. I'd be, I'd be saying, okay, Thursday, I want to lock you in at like $197. They're not going to give a huge deal. I yeah. mean, they give three or four dollars, and that's about it. Yeah. And then you decide that okay, I'll buy ten thousand shares. Um, you know, I'm not sure whether it's going to be a lockup inside of that. Not, you know what I mean? They, they're always different. Um, some funds will turn around if there's not a lockup. Say, okay, I'm going to make two dollars and ten thousand shares, or well, fifty thousand shares. But they're taking a risk, that's for sure. Uh, and then what also ends up happening, which is not going to be a lot, then you are going to have um, there's 5.5 million shares outstanding now. We're only going to have 250,000 more, which is nothing. You know, so it's not going to change that shot position uh, too, too dramatically. Yeah. You know, so that, this is going to be a story that's out there for a long period of time, though, because <laughs> every time we brought up Tyson, every time you bring up uh, is Purdue is Purdue. It would be P U R. Oh, yeah. D. Are they public? Are they, are they a brand of... Uh, that's, that's what it... It would be funny if, they, if Tyson owns Purdue. Right, that's what, Right. Yeah, I think it's just because it's Purdue Farms. Yeah, right. And they probably are just a brand of a conglomerate. You know, because when you look at those numbers, those numbers, are, pff, my God, they're just day and night. Definitely. You know, there's no doubt about that. Uh, now, the note and bond market, okay, so if we take a look at the note and bond market, what you're going to see is this. Now, yesterday, we went up on tremendously lighter volume, and that would be looking, I'd be saying that, okay, that was saying to me that, okay, Powell's not going to say what, you know, he, he's not going to be as dovish as the market might think. So this is going to be a big day in the bond market today, as, as is tomorrow. Uh, we're going to definitely get more volume than yesterday. Yesterday, we only got 867,000 contracts. And this market, you know, likes to do a million, 1.2, 1.4 million. And along with the 30 year, so that was the 10, the 30 year, no, not US, U9, the 30 year also had a nice contraction of volume. And we'll see whether we get volume in here today. So the, the key would be yesterday did uh, 181,000. 
So if that's what you get, that would be telling me, uh, well, if, it, if the volume contracts again, it doesn't look like it's going to, but if it did, that would be telling me that Powell's statement is going to be uh, more hawkish than dovish. Because that would be saying that these bonds want to go down versus going up in price and up in yield. Um, so as we, come into the, uh, as we come into the end of today, tomorrow, that is going to be a, a big number, no doubt. Um, yeah, Apple. So when's Apple coming out with numbers, too? They are today, I believe. Yes. Ooh, that's yeah. good. Okay, after the close today. And uh, look at this D.H. Horton. D. D. H. I. That's quite a. Did they come out with numbers? That's quite an expansion. So that's up. Well, it's five up five percent. Now you get a nice pop there. Oh, yeah. yeah. So they, they came out this morning. Okay. Let's see. So the estimate was $1.18. Year over year, they made $1.26. Cancellation raised at 20%. Sales orders rose 8% in value to $4.7 billion. So just that was the that was the year over year comparison. Yes. The estimate was actually one oh six. So they actually beat it by a much greater degree. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's, uh, oh, and they're buying a billion dollars in stock back. Oh my God. <laughs> these, these, Join the club. These buybacks, man, are something else. Seriously, right? Yeah. The uh, revenue is four point seven five billion to four point nine. That's what they're looking for next quarter. Yeah. Okay, so let's see where they do business. They. The company operates in the Midwest, Mid-Atlantic, Southeast, Southwest, and Western regions of the United States. They also uh, do financial operations, provide mortgage financing. Yes, they sell single-family homes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Just trying to see the... Oh, there it is. Average price, 300000 Yeah, so okay. see, that's, that's a good average price. Yeah. That's, you know, that's an affordable average price for first-time buyers. That's yeah. what's going so on. So 80 markets, 30 states, 75% of their revenue from the Southeast, South Central, and western regions of the country. What a big number, right? Yes. That's and they say the largest U.S. home builder by volume constructs single-family homes that range from 1,000 to 4,000 square feet. Wow. Yeah. Okay, so let's see if it's putting any juice in the rest of these builders. Yeah, Toll Brothers up 51 cents. No hey. big deal there. Yeah, that's a percent and a half. That's... Let's see. Taylor Morrison. What's KB? So the strongest ones out there is... L G I H. L G I H. I wonder if it has to do with if they're in that same exact area as yeah. this company because regionally they might be right there. Right. Yeah. Right. Stay right there. Tommy and I come right back, folks. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. 
TFNN.com. Educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. Dow. Dow right now uh, down 54. NASDAQ is off 30. S&P is off 9.5. And, and if we take a look at, uh, we were just talking about the housing market. If we take a look at this, evidently, <coughs> you know, lower rates, which totally makes sense, folks, uh, will get people out there. Uh, so U.S. pending home sales increased uh, by most in three months. Contract signings to purchase previously owned homes rose in June by the most in three months, indicating demand may be picking up. Uh, lower, lower rates, man. I mean, yeah. Um, index of pending home sales increased 2.8% from the previous month, exceeding the most optimist uh, forecast in a Bloomberg survey. The gain in contract signings is a welcome sign. Of course it is, yeah. Uh, the report stands in contrast to recent data out over the last month, pointing to weakness in the sector. Existing home sales fell more than expected in June, while new home sales missed estimates at the same time. Housing starts dropped to the lowest in three months. Pending home sales are often looked at as a leading indicator of existing home purchases. Contract signings increased 5.4% from the prior month in the West. And you can see, listen, <coughs> sorry folks, excuse me. Um, when we take a look at that 10 year, this is, when we talk, take a look at three months, this is a dramatic change. Yeah, big time, man. You know, so. But three months ago, yeah. approximately right there, right? 2.5, and now you're 2.05. Definitely. Half a percent. Huge. And, you know, we'll see where this is going to go. But when you get down into the threes, uh, you're talking, uh, I think, psychological, too. It's a whole yeah, thing. You know what I mean? Right. And then, you know, maybe people get in there, they run the numbers, and it, it seems more affordable or it seems just affordable. And it's, it is more, definitely more affordable for a lot of people. And it, because what ends up happening is that you can't have your expenses, well, you can, depending on how loose they are with the, with the money coming out and what, you know, basically bank or mortgage company are dealing with. But most of the time, folks, they want only one-third, uh, you know, of your... Your mortgage payment to represent one-third of your exactly, paycheck or, exactly. or, or right. you know, um, budget for right. that month. Yeah. right. And so that makes a dramatic difference because a couple hundred dollars can make a difference. And on two or three hundred thousand, a half a percent, there's your couple hundred dollars, you know, pretty quickly. The, um, what else do we got out here? So you got, you got dishes down pretty good. Ca oh, Capital One, what happened to Capital One? Um, do you like your data? Do you like sharing your data with, oh, the, with anybody on really? the internet? Because okay. Because they I lost a hundred million people's uh, data. Oh. And I guess it had to do with their information being stored on the Amazon cloud, I believe. Wow. And a employee actually somehow doing something. So they're talking about, yeah, analyst, uh, no, no. Okay, yeah, but let's see what. Uh, yeah, data breach. Yeah. And so that's why it's down today. And it's it's a huge number of people in terms of 100 million um, 
So let's see, these are in. Mind if I click back? I just wanted to try and get the real. Yes, yeah, a former a Amazon Web Services worker accused in cloud hack of oh. Capital One. Holy cow. 100 million people in the U.S. illegally accessed after pro prosecutors accused a Seattle woman identified by Amazon as one of its former cloud service employees of breaking into the bank's servers. Um, while the complaint doesn't identify the cloud provider that stored the data, they mention uh, a reference to Simple Storage Service, Amazon Web Services' popular data storage software. Um, so they're saying that this data, and we can read it and pick the lines, that, you know, w wasn't been used, hasn't been used, maybe they, like, corralled it. Okay. Um, but you really can't be sure, right? The right. second one person gets a hold of it, in the span of 0 0.2 seconds, it can yeah. be in everybody's email box across the world. Um, Six million Canadians as well. Arrested Monday, this Paige Thompson appeared in federal court in Seattle. Data theft occurred between March 12th and July 17th. That's a pretty broad range of dates. Um, she last worked at Amazon in 2016. And look at the information that they have, folks. This is like, this, here it is. This is why this is like. Okay, the largest category of data stolen was supplied by consumers and small businesses when they applied for credit cards from 2005 through 2019. Yeah. It included personal data, names, addresses, phone numbers, dates of birth, self-reported income, credit scores. That's, that's a big number, man. Yeah. You know? Yep. I guess, you know, yeah. Huge. I mean, that's, yeah, you put down all that information um, when you're applying for it especially. Right. Yeah. And, excuse me, and they... I think they pulled, I, I, there's the line in there somewhere that they don't believe the data has been used for, to, you know, to, I can't remember the verbiage they used, but I, I didn't believe it, whatever they were saying. Yeah, me, you know? no, I, yeah. And, you know, that the amazing part about these public companies in general, the first time that something happens, they always deny, deny, deny. Sure. Then it, it's like a couple months later, then a little comes out. Then by six months or seven months, folks, it's like, oh, yeah, it did happen. But guess what? You know, it's old news by then. And, you know, you know in this case here, what you, what you definitely have is that uh, the market is looking at that very seriously, right? Yes. You know what yeah. I mean? Oh, six, seven percent drop. Right. Oof. Right. Um, yeah. Let, let's go back into the... Uh, housing, because let's see what they're saying. This is going to be about ex low mortgage rates. Okay, so the, the uh, America's housing affordability crisis spreads to the heartland. Um, what began on the coast in New York and San Francisco is now uh, radiating on the nation's heartland from Las Vegas to Charleston, South Carolina. Entry-level buyers are scrambling to purchase homes that are in short supply. Yeah, land is, land is going up, man. More people, right? You know? Yeah. Um, yeah. Most many buyers in the expensive West Coast cities have already retreated after the surge of prices. Well, I, you know what? No matter how many times you know you, you look at the West Coast cities and even you know Boston, it's like hard to comprehend that you know you can't live there without paying seven, eight, eight hundred thousand dollars for no, a house. No, and that's where you know you got to start pushing across, and cities expand, and cities get next to the bigger cities, and you know right. you got to push out to areas that are more more affordable. Right. Um, all signs point to a housing market that should be doing really well, and it's not. Um, that's Chief Economist Realtor. The number one constraint, despite lower mortgages, is that people can't find housing that they feel is affordable. So you're just locked out of the market that you reside in. Right. You know? And so you have to make that choice to move. That's a tough one. Look at this. This is pretty. Louisville, Ken Louisville Kentucky. Okay. Yeah, well, I thought that said 800000 first. I'm saying, okay, yeah, it's yeah. 200000 So 29-year-old worker trying to buy a starter home, less than two hundred k, Yeah. And just an anecdotal kind of, but, you know, that, Three occasions, houses planned for a tour snapped up before um, he could get there. He was outbid on another. Finally, had above asking offers accepted Sunday on a house listed for about one ninety nine. Let's see. Yep, you Only know. after his agent locked the door. I don't know. Some of these get sens sensationalized when I hear about yeah. you know, people that. Oh, I set up all these appointments. Well, just go to the house then. What 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 is the what is the delay between sure. you setting up an appointment and getting there? So it hap it happens once, it happens twice, it happens the third time, and yeah. you're still like, can I see it in a couple of days? No, I mean, totally. you know, it's and it's you know, at two hundred thousand, you know, you're talking uh, a payment of only eight hundred dollars a month. So I, I have a hard time sometimes comprehending that they're not doing numbers. Yeah, you got to add on the other payments though. That's not you got to add on the oh. the insurance, the taxes, because it's not eight hundred dollar payment. In fairness for people. People who are buying their first home. Yeah. It's not. What do you think it is? 
We'll figure it out. At 200,000, I'm just saying. It could be 1,400 or 1,500, easy. Taxes could, taxes could be three or four grand, insurance could be two or three grand, so you gotta limit that out. And stay right there, folks. Tommy and I come right back. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that have transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. Tom O'Brien published the 900th issue of his weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, on July 22nd. It's amazing he started The Gold Report more than 17 years ago when gold was trading at only $252. To celebrate, we're having a special Tiger Dollar sale. Right now, you can spend only $495 and we'll give you 200 extra Tiger Dollars. So you'll end up with 695 Tiger Dollars, which is the yearly price of The Gold Report. Tiger Dollars can be used for any TFNN newsletter or service, and this offer is open to new and current subscribers. With gold making six-year highs and gold mining equities trading higher, this is a great time to sign up for the Gold Report at a dramatic savings. For all the details, visit the front page of TFNN.com. This deal ends July 31st, so don't miss out. Get your Tiger Dollars and sign up today for the Gold Report 900th issue sale. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow is down 47. NASDAQ is off 29. S&Ps are down 9. And this market's trying to claw back, folks. That's oh, the bottom line. Yeah. You know, we, we take a look at this uh, S&P. Uh, you know, my, my take is this. This, this S&P still wants this uh, 3055, which is the ABC structure. 3055. Yeah. And we Sounds hit, like a nice round number. Totally. We hit 301 <laughs> out here today at 313, you know. Um, so, we got plenty of news coming in. You got, you know, the Fed. We got the window dressing. Speaking, and then, guess speaking what? Speaking of high numbers, man, yes. how about 900? That's Nine, a high number. This is, and this is the last, no, tomorrow's the last day? Tomorrow's last tomorrow's day. Tomorrow's the last day, okay, right. Yeah. July 31st, man, we're right. into August. But we got a Tiger Dollar sale going on for two more days. You can get out there and get a $200 bonus, Tiger Dollars. You can spend $495. You end up with $695 Tiger Dollars, and then you can use them for any newsletter, any service. All right, this is just a Tiger Dollar sale. We've just designed the price around the Gold Report. If you're thinking about signing up for the Gold Report, you want information on the equities out there, um, current subscribers you want to take advantage, a year of the Gold Report right now is $695. So you take advantage of the Tiger Dollar sale. You purchase those Tiger Dollars. 
You end up with 695. You can spend them on anything you'd like, but we've designed it right so that you can afford that uh, year of the gold report. Right. And the price of the year of the gold report going up August 1st. Man, I don't think we've went up on gold report prices in like five years, 10 years. I think I mean, it's more that's money. Where it's, yeah, we yeah. Don't, I can't remember. So going up on prices as well August 1st. So great time, man. You can really get a full year subscription for 495 bucks, and you got gold rocking and rolling. Can't beat it, man. And, you know, bottom line is if it's a target dollar sale. So yeah. if you don't want the gold report, guess what? That's you right. get something else. Current subscribers out there to any newsletter, Larry, Steve's, Dave, Basil, right. get out there and get those target dollars. You save money right away on those subscriptions. Stay right there, folks. We get Fast Market coming up next, and we get our man, Mr. Basil Chapman, Steve Rhodes, Dave White. Be back this afternoon. Thanks, Tom. Thanks, man. Go get them, folks.